Hi all, it's Juliana Avdiva here. It's 7.30 p.m. Central European time. Well, in Europe it's 7.30 and Thursday, so it means it's time for our weekly stream. Welcome to Munich, to my home place. I hope all you are doing well. Um, yes, and for today's uh, stream, uh, we will continue with the well-tempered uh, clavier uh, with the C minor, prelude and fugue. Hello, Maria. Um, and then we will pay tribute to a Russian composer who is who was born on this day 180 years ago. Hello, Lars. And um, for this occasion, I would like to perform one of my mm, favorite pieces for piano by uh, Tchaikovsky. Um, it's his Dumka, Opus 59, a wonderful, wonderful piece. Um, so I'm very happy to see you all here. Hi, Alex. Hello, Roberto. Hello to Brazil. It, uh, hello, Maria. That's correct. It's Bram's birthday as well. But I think that Tchaikovsky today, he is, he is getting a little bit older than Bram's. Or actually not. No, he is not. But <laughs> still, Tchaikovsky is indeed... Um, a very important composer to me, so that's why uh, today I will be performing the Dumka for you after our prelude and fugue in C minor. Hello, uh, hello to Taiwan, hello Marcus, hi Jakub, um, hi Aria to Denmark. Well, I was asked, um, some of you were interested about my approach, how I am starting uh, on working with fugues. Um, it is actually um, interesting uh, work, actually. So what, what I mm, personally do is first I'm trying to uh, play the fugue through. So from the very beginning till the very end. Hi, Wesley. Back, uh, hello back to Taiwan and hello to Warsaw. Um, so first of all, I'm trying to play the fugue through, even if it's a more complicated fugue it doesn't matter if it's under tempo or it's in a normal tempo i'm i think it is important to get a picture of the entire fugue from the very beginning hello christian uh, because it's you know it's like an architecture if you're standing in front of great uh, uh big building it's important to make a um, a view of the entire building first before you're starting to absorb the details of it so hello uh, hello ben um, Dario is saying that we have some problems with the uh, with the connection. I'm sorry for that and hope that this will be sorted soon. Hello to Yokohama and to Peru to Benjamin. Well, um, once I have played it a few through, it is um, already very helpful in order to understand how the structure of the piece is, which is for me very uh, important because it helps me a lot also in organizing my practice on it. So basically once I have somehow uh, went through the um, uh, through the fugue till, till the end, then it is for me, it is very crucial to divide it in smaller pieces so uh, that I can really practice not the entire thing the whole time, not just uh, playing it through from the very beginning till the end, but really to divide it in sections which I practice separate then. And um, thank you, Julian. It's great to hear that you have a good connection here. Great. Um, so it is um, in this section, within these sections, I practice the hands separately. I practice the voices separately so that um, every line is really getting very clear. Sometimes uh, what I also do very often that I play uh, let's say one line, it doesn't matter how, how the voice is actually uh, going through, but I, I, I try to play even, let's say, in the three voice fugue, it happens very often that the middle voice is jumping from the right hand to the left hand. But it is very important for me to keep uh, the line in my mind in, in its length, so I, I, I really play the, not the, just the hands, but also the voices. Hello to Luxembourg. Um, so. I think it is uh, really also for the for the memory and for the understanding of the piece how how it is built. It is really important to follow each single line, and that's why I practice 
uh, them also uh, all separate and I play sometimes two voices and it's a, if it's a bigger few like five voices hello to Miami and hello to Hokkaido um, I also practice sometimes three voices middle voices so every possible uh, um, how do you say it my, 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 my words are not not there yet uh, combinations yes that's that's right all possible combinations of the uh, voices so that I really understand how uh, how they work together and in the end I try to uh, to uh, put the, uh, the, long, the sections together and it's getting uh, bigger and bigger and finally I come to the end so I think the essential thing is not to practice the entire fugue from the very beginning till the end but really to divide it to structure it, to organize it in smaller sections and practice them and then put them all together. I, because otherwise sometimes, I know that sometimes it happens that the end of the, or the end of the fugue, the end of the piece is somehow done because normally we're getting tired after intensive uh, work on the, um, on, on the fugue in the beginning. In the beginning it's a fresh mind, fr uh, great, um, great um, motivation and in the end it's, yeah, somehow, yeah. Hello to Reinach um, and to Naples. Um, so to, today we are coming to the C minor prelude and fugue. Um, it is, um, as we discussed also last time, the prelude, uh, the idea of the prelude is um, a kind of improvisation. And I think in the C minor prelude, it is also very obvious uh, that this is um, uh, this is indeed a kind of improvising movement it is uh, um, it's in a way the toccata so the idea of the um, mm, the idea of, of, of it is really um, I think this this the the character of this prelude is very it's restless it's very energetic it's it's this uh, 16th movement is it's never it's never stopping so it's it always has this clear uh, clear direction although it's actually based as well as uh, the uh, the uh, uh, prelude in c major also it's actually just chords chords moving in the in the end in the beginning they are moving uh, down to the to the lower register in the middle we have a recitativo then it comes to a great uh, explosion uh, with presto, which is really it sounds like he, like like real improvisation. I think for me, then it comes to an adagio part, which is recitativo, and coming to the last bars, which are for me really it's a really frightening bars because this movement in uh, diminished chords going down is like a little bit for me like going to the to the very bottom of I don't know of one soul maybe because he also he Bach reaches the lower C it's a very low it's the lowest key he uses in this in this prelude as a uh, orgel point before uh, in the last bar he's going suddenly up and this is like uh, like really uh, like a real ex explosion and finishing in the uh, C major so with the with the E natural uh, which means that it's a kind it's like a sunrise it's like something something very very powerful and I see um, uh, this prelude as a very uh, it's very unique because it's so passionate and it's so it has something something also to do with fire with some like fire flames I don't know it's very 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 special and I think it's this restless character that it never compromises it always moves uh, it moves in front I think this is I mean forwards this is something very uh, uh, unique about this uh, this prelude and the fugue is completely different the fugue is if in the C major for instance where the, the fugue was more in the mo mood of uh, uh, the the prelude so here the pre the fu f oh, prelude fugue oh so the fugue in the C minor is um, a great contrast to the um, Prelude. It's completely different character. It's more. It's very elegant. I feel it as a, as a dance. Maybe as a gavotte. Although of course it's not written in a gavotte, um, um, metrum. So it's. Uh, but the character is very dancing like. So, uh, it is completely 
something completely completely different it's quite uh, the, the view has just just three parts or three voices and um, it's not so tight composed as the C major view we were, we were uh, talking about last week. Uh, it's much more transparent. There are many episodes without uh, the subject at all. So it would just, uh, I think it's a, it's a, it's a great um, moment of also to, to see how Bach develops the motives from the from the from the from the subject, he just takes a part, a motive of it, and he develops it. So I think it's uh, really, really uh, great. It has it's very it has more so, so much air in it as well. And hello, Darinka. Uh, it is a very yeah. It's a great contrast to this very uh, energetic prelude. It's a kind of com more. Char more charming, more elegant, more dancing-like. So I think it's, um, um, yeah, it's interesting to see already in these two examples of C major uh, and C minor already there the differences in this within the cycle or within within the set. It is uh, very um, just the creativity of Bach. That's something what 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 makes me so. Yeah, so inspired because he has he had somehow his mind was so free was so f also so he was has had this courage to try things out I think and this is what I um, what I really um, what makes me so happy to be honest and um, yes um, I just uh, would like what because I, I saw a question which editions I'm using um, actually. The, finally, the edition I'm using is uh, Berenreiter because this is uh, the original uh, Urtext. The, uh, it is based on um, uh, manuscripts. Um, of course, there are several also manuscripts, versions especially of Book 1. And in some cases, like in the Fugue of C Major, there is also the uh, previous... Um, Sorry, previous version of the fugue, which is earlier version than the, the one which is uh, more popular and more often played. Uh, this uh, fugue is also printed there as an, just an option that you can you can uh, try it out. But I think um, it's interesting to have a look on other editions, on editions like Buzoni edition, for or for uh, of course there are some. Uh, other editions like Cherny uh, Cherny edition. Um, what I, I I I have to say I have some Buz some of Buzoni uh, preludes and fugues uh, also also here in, in my place and um, there are some some things because it's more also it's uh, not just the the, the the score it's also some uh, suggestions for uh, interpretation. So of course this grand. Uh, manner of Buzoni because of course the uh, the way he treats the piano he also in Bach uh, in Bach transcriptions well in transcriptions of Bach's music it's really he, he it's a, of course it's very much organ style and even in the C minor in the in the, in the C minor um, the prelude he suggests here in the end uh, this um, double bass um, <laughs> even grander than it already is, I think um, for me, of course, I have to, 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 to tell you also my other observation, of course, some things, it would be great to try them out in the concert hall, because of course, here in my place, where is, I mean, it's something, it's always a bit different, especially when, when I'm learning new pieces and then bring them to the concert hall, it always takes a little time to adjust because it's um, the acoustics is different, the piano is different, and of course the difference basically between a smaller small room and the concert hall or a bigger bigger hall is of course enormous, and it takes time uh, uh, and it, it, it needs time, it requires time to try things out also with the concert hall because the sound is different and also the result might be different. It also um, uh, applies for the pedal, for first of all, articulation, dynamics. So, of course, um, I hope that sooner or later I will also come to the concert hall with Bach and I am sure that um, I will try, I will, I have some ideas also on 
maybe in some points of trying or something with the, with the middle pedal, but um, I need the console to really to prove whether it's a good idea or not. So now I am performing for you the C minor prelude and fugue from book one, Johann Sebastian Bach. Sebastian Bach. So it is unbelievable, but we are done with the first key already. So the C, C major and C minor were done. So next week we are continuing, we are going to a, um, to a tonality with lots of um, sharps, C sharp major and C sharp minor, uh, which are very, very, very difficult. To be honest, it is really uh, hard work, but it's somehow very inspiring. It's so inspiring to get closer to to understand, to try to understand this language in a better in a better way. And I'm very excited. So we move one step forwards next week to the C sharp major prelude book and fugue, of course, book one. Thank you 
so much for your um, for your uh, reactions. I'm very happy that you are enjoying it. And of course, please feel free. Uh, don't hesitate to ask any questions. I don't know, maybe about um, about some fingerings or some articulations. Uh, and if I am able to help somehow, it um, would be really very, I would be happy to do that. Um, hello to Singapore and hello to Nuremberg. Um, so, yes, please, uh, because sometimes it's, uh, just ask if you, if you have, if I can help somehow with uh, some things, uh, I, I, I would be happy to do that. So now we're moving to, 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 to another topic of uh, tonight's conversation. It is, um, yes, it is unbelievable, but uh, Pyotr Tchaikovsky was born 180 years ago. And this is, um, this is something really special for me, to be honest, because Pyotr Tchaikovsky or his music, this is something what I have very special memories uh, with, of course. Hello to Italy and to Michigan and to Mexico. Um, so it is, um, yeah. The, I will I will explain you why Tchaikovsky is also a very important part part of my of my life. Uh, well, of course, first of all, um, my first steps of, of playing. This instrument of playing piano are were connected with music of Tchaikovsky, and oh yes, I see, I see that um, Dario is studying Mephisto Walter, and would 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 need my hands. I I'm, um, I can, I, I I'm afraid that it will be difficult to, uh, yeah, to borrow my hands. But I can. If you have some questions about Mephisto, please let, let me know a wonderful piece. Hello to Paraguay. Well, uh, so my first public performance which I ever had in my life was with two Tchaikovsky pieces from the, uh, from the album for the young. Um, so I was six years old and uh, there was a concert um, in Moscow in my home place, in my home time, uh, hometown. And yes, I was five as I started. How long Alex is asking how long I have been playing piano. So I was five years old and six. Uh, as I was six, I had my first public performance um, and I was um, playing two pieces, uh, the Sweet Dreams and Kamarinska from the uh, album for young, uh, for young. And uh, my parents and my teacher um, was saying, oh, don't be scared, don't be nervous, you know, like, uh, you, you just go on stage, go to the piano and play and everything will be fine. And somehow that was, you know, I, I didn't know what to expect. However, what I remember is that, that the moment when I, when I, when I went on stage, the, this, this, this incredible feeling which really overwhelmed me, that was so incredible uh, because, you know, it was a fantastic moment to be able to share music, to share, to communicate with people in the audience I don't know at all. I never met them before and uh, never talked to them and probably will not, I mean, will not, not have a chance to talk to everyone, but we communicate. And this moment of communication through music on stage in, in this particular moment, that was, that was absolutely, I was I was so happy, I was so excited about that. Hello to USA. And this is really something, the feeling was so amazing and that I wanted to repeat it. I want to experience it again and again and again. And um, yes, uh, of course, my parents and my teacher, they realized what, what they can do. Uh, what, what, what they can they, they, what they can do in order to motivate me for practice. So they said, of course, if you want to play, you have to practice. So I am. That's as I realized that uh, yeah, that's this, those things are connected. That if I want to play, I need to practice. Well, then I did practice. Of course, I did not. 
I did. I was not always over motivated to practice, but somehow this feeling that was the crucial moment because that's I knew why I have to. That was the the goal. Why I practice? Why what what for? Because I wanna have fun. On I wanna enjoy music. I wanna share it with other people. That was what I really uh, liked from the very beginning. That's why for me Tchaikovsky, in my personal feeling, is very much connected with that uh, with that. Um, experience. Um, I live uh, in Munich, in Germany, uh, uh, Geoff. I'm, I'm, yes, here in Munich. So, um, Alex, uh, yes, it's. Uh, you are asking whether uh, whether I like my job. I think for me personally, music is. You know, making music. It's not. It's not just something what I do, to, I, 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 it's, it's a kind of necessity for me to, to spend my time to, to live music in a way. It's not because it's not, you know, music is everywhere. It surrounds me uh, you know, during the day, during the night, uh, when, I, when, I, when I walk, when I, anything I do, somehow it's always there. And it is, um, some music ideas are always somehow uh, are always in my mind so it is um yeah it's like it's, it's not just like like i'm making music it's i live music in a way in, in 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 inside of me and this is this is great but it can be also a little bit annoying you know because you cannot just switch it if some something is playing in my head i just cannot switch it off so <laughs> sometimes it's really becoming a kind of idea fix so it's uh, I have to I have to uh, uh, somehow switch it off and sometimes it's quite uh, quite um, uh, difficult oh Ben <laughs> whether I still can play fugues after after some beers in Munich good question well I never tried I, I decide either I, I, I uh, well I'm actually not a beer drinker but uh, however either either I enjoy some good drink by the way, now I thank you for reminding me that I have my tea here. Uh, or I play the few. I, I I never tried to uh, combine both, so I would actually not try. To be honest, I think I, that there is a chance to decide whether that one, whether playing fugues or drinking, enjoying a good drink. Um, I think Kyoko was asking how how many yes how many how long did I practice as a kid. I I cannot really say how uh, well I think that in the beginning it was around one two hours but I had a completely different you know in in Moscow or in Russia there are some special music schools uh, where all subjects are uh, in the same school so I did not have to travel between the schools and my parents or my parents uh, and my. Uh, grandparents were bringing me to the school and I was staying there for many hours having all possible uh, subjects and then uh, I went home and uh, practiced there so I think basically one two hours in the beginning and then and then it was um, of course much easier for my parents also to organize it so this is um, this is really uh, that was really great great help uh, hello, Andrea, to Milano. Yes, I did study also some 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 pieces by Schumann, but somehow they were not so many, not so many as uh, Tchaikovsky's. And um, um, of course, uh, probably I think it's uh, of course also because it's uh, uh, I mean in Russia Tchaikovsky has a very special standing if i may say it this way uh, and it is um it's a very loved composer there and um, as he composed so many pieces for piano that's unbelievable um yeah i just cannot say that um i just sometimes i wonder because uh, it's really incredibly much what uh, tchaikovsky composed for uh, for pianists actually but uh, it not not so many pieces by him are uh, performed some of, the, of them are really really difficult uh, like G major uh, sonata for instance which is a great piece and I'm still 
thinking whether I should learn it because it's a musically it's a wonderful piece, but it's um, uh, it's a compli quite complicated and um, of course the uh, B flat ma major concerto, so B flat major, B flat minor concerto, the concerto number one is of course also the piece which I loved from the, I don't know, that was probably one of the first piano concertos I have ever heard and that was really, really beautiful. Um, mm, Topol, no, I didn't play any other instruments besides piano, so, but for me, to be honest, it's um, somehow the piano is the instrument I w uh, would like to play, you know, in Russian, in Russian language, the word of the piano is royal, so royal, uh, from French royal, so it's the, the, um, uh, king's, king, the king of instruments for me, that's what, how I feel about, uh, about, um, uh, about the, this instrument, and, um, Actually, I, 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 as I played a lot of chamber music, also being a kid, I, I had a chance to uh, really uh, come quite close to other instruments, so that I have an idea how they work, how they work, how how how, how you should play on play on them. But the piano, I it was never the doubt that that that's that, that's the instrument I I would like I would like to play. Jakub, yes, I like Mussorgsky's uh, music very, very much. I think it is very, it is completely, well, Tchaikovsky and of course the uh, the group around Mussorgsky, the uh, group of five, is, uh, they represented somehow, they were kind of conquering groups. Uh, and Mussorgsky's music is actually, it's actually, it's so progressive also for that, uh, for that, um, time, it's the language, the musical language uh, is very uh, modern, it has not, uh, although of course what uh, all or some Russian composers, most of Russian composers have is this Slavic element and I will, I would like to explain that to you on the piano a little bit later, uh, the, the, what I understand under uh, this Slavic element, well coming to the piece I would like to perform for you today, uh, which is uh, Dumka in Opus uh, 59. Uh, this is one of actually very untypical for Tchaikovsky uh, pieces because it is uh, actually, a, in a way, Dumka is an epic ballad. It's a Slavic epic ballad. So the idea is that um, a singer is telling a story about old heroes, about great times. Um, and um, he, the, the, the singer actually is uh, accompanying himself, uh, playing a kind of sitter, uh, and um, you will hear it in the very beginning, very, very, uh, very, very clear. Uh, but about this epic style, of course, uh, Russia also has uh, some uh, kind of old legions and some uh, epic heroes, and this is just to demonstrate for you, this is a picture of a of Russian painter Viktor Vesnitsov, who made this picture of uh, the Bogatyr. These are Russian heroes. Uh, so they were traveling around and uh, saving the world. So kind of Superman. And I think this is um, this uh, Dunka, the piece I will be playing for you. This some, somehow it's a, maybe it's kind of illustration of uh, of uh, of this one of one of their great uh, great uh, things what they what how they saved saved the wo world or something and um, Ben I don't know why why it's not it's actually it's it's a wonderful piece because it's a it's actually a kind of rhapsody it is uh, it, the idea of Dunka, this is the Slavic epic ballad, as I was saying, is that uh, many characters, uh, uh, from the melancholic to a very happy, uh, happy character, are really coming very close to each other. So it is very, uh, it is, it happens very often uh, that uh, uh, Dvorak, for instance, was using this uh, genre quite, quite often, but also uh, Janacek and uh, uh, Martinu. 
But in this, in this dunka, it is uh, really the beginning is the opening. This is the singer who is who is presenting his story and, and uh, playing the sitter, and um, it's something like he 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 tells about the past. So it's a little bit sad in a way. It's a little bit, um, but I, I will let me just show you a little bit. It's very uh, melancholic and very. simple and very Slavic. What I mean with, for me personally, what is Slavic? Slavic is, uh, the, the language is, the musical language is mostly built on um, uh, on the natural uh, scale, so and the combination of plagal system is very, very often. And this is, this is, this happens also very, you will find this motif in Chopin, like Russian composers like Prokofiev in the in the second piano concerto. So this is this combination uh, in Mussorgsky. So this is already uh, somehow it, for me personally it immediately means this is something about about the great. Uh, yeah, some, some, some storytelling about the great times in the past. That's how I feel. And then in Dunka, we come back to we come back to uh, Dunka. The uh, the actual rhapsody part is very dancing, like it's a little bit wild even. <laughs> getting wilder every 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 actually every section there is a great cadenza uh, in the in the um, middle of the piece before it comes to the climax and uh, somehow this is the moment when everything when everything yeah it explodes and in the end the singer is comes back to the to the reality so this this magical world is gone, and the, the very end is of course connected with the, it's uh, connected with the, with the first uh, motive. It's very sad and very. Somehow very. I somehow I feel sorrow there, but. Please, I hope you will enjoy this wonderful piece, which I really very, very, yeah, I just admire it so much. So, please enjoy Dunka uh, by Piotr Chikovsky.
that was Piotr Tchaikovsky's Dunka, somehow today is the C minor day somehow because we had a um, C minor prelude and few by Bach from book one and now also the Dunka. Yes, it is somehow, it has a lot also for me personally, it has a lot to do with the uh, landscape, absolutely, yes, that um, some, some, exactly, I also, uh, I think that was Jakub saying, saying uh, yes, Jakub saying about the step, uh, yes, it's something with, with a, a very flat, right, like the European part of Russia has not so much hills and um, it's just endless, endless landscape, just some, some, some fields, some, uh, yeah, some, some, forests and um, I think this music really illustrates this uh, Russian Russian nature and of course this combination um, between the, the, those characters uh, very sad and very dramatic and uh, very joyful very happy I think it's uh, yeah it's somehow very for me very moving to play it so thank you so much for being here to, tonight, to, uh, for, for those who didn't sleep, I am uh, I wish now a good night, and for other, uh, for the others who uh, who are, uh, just started the day or early afternoon, I wish a good day. Next week, I think uh, someone was already asking about Beethoven. Well, besides the many sharps, the C sharp. Uh, major prelude and few we will be moving to Beethoven um, to some variations. Uh, maybe you have some um, thoughts about uh, Beethoven variations or what, well, maybe you can give me some ideas about your feeling, um, your, yeah, your thoughts about generally what is variations in Beethoven. Thank you so much and See you next week. Keep well. Bye-bye.